Howdy, howdy, howdy. Welcome back to reading uh, 001, the, the SCP side series where I'm checking all of the extra number ones they've added. Last night, as of when I was re I'm recording this, I was going through making folders to prepare for everything so that I have an easier time keeping track of where I left off at. For when there's large gaps in, uh, sorry about the crinkling, when there's large gaps in time of recording. And I found out that when you order these chronologically, they actually have um, Roman numerals separating them, which I assume means that these stories go together in groups. I'm also pretty sure that there's some of these I already read from before they had a chronological order. Either way, it looks like this next one we're going to do, codename Wrong, the consensus, is in a bracket with or Ouroboros Ouroboros, a record, and past and future. And past and future is the one we just did. So this time we're going to be checking out Wrong Proposal. And it doesn't look like it has multiple entries, so even better. But it's also pretty long. <clears throat> So the crinkling noise is that I'm grabbing a cough drop so that my throat doesn't give out while I'm reading this. Notice from the Foundation Records and Information and Security in, uh, Administration, which I believe is just NISA. By annual security update, item number randomization has been initiated. Until security detail or update is complete, all files are locked. For emergency updates, it's RISA, not NISA. Please access the Emergency Data Archival System, EDAS. Maria Jones, Director Riza. Ziggy, turn off the fan. Eight thousand eleven items remaining. Item number SCP one targeted. One file identified with the search term SCP zero zero one. File SCP zero zero one selected. Initiate automated item number randomization. Scanning file for search term SCP zero zero one. So it's Euclid, level clearance 5. Special containment procedures. SCP-001 cannot be secured or contained conventionally, and it is unknown if it may occur in the future. As such, a reactive approach is to be adopted. <clears throat> Said approach consists of the following chapters of the Forbidden City Convention, which is as the Forbidden City Peking, site in which the definition of one and ratification of the Forbidden City Convention occurred. Prevention and minimization of the conditions conducive to the possible occurrence of SCP-001, or its equivalent via Forbidden City Convention Chapter 1. Management of organizational transition and unity following implementation of Forbidden City Convention Chapter 1 via Forbidden City Convention Chapters 2 and 3, respectively. All above-mentioned chapters of the Forbidden City Convention are not to be altered unless via a unanimous vote by the O5 Council. Description I'm not sure why it's read like this without being a link. SCP-001 is a successful occurrence of a CK-class restructuring scenario, which generated the current reality via the alteration of a previous iteration of reality. Based on first-person accounts, SCP-001 occurred on the 1st of June in the year 1900 Anno Domini of the previous reality. The nature of 001 is such that all causes, events, references, and memories of Occult War I, referred to as the Fifth Occult War in the previous reality, are omitted and replaced with various anomalous and non-anomalous parallels in the current reality. Foundation documentation regarding Occult War I is obtained from anecdotal accounts of 13 non-anomalous human beings who retain their memories of the previous reality via a phenomenon coined as Partial 001 Immunity. However, the mechanism behind Partial 001 Immunity is unknown and will not be assessed as decided by the O5 Council. Efforts to identify additional individuals, if any, with immunity are on, on indefinite hiatus as decided by the O5 Council. Below is an abridged list of events during Occult War I and plausible analogous events in the current reality. See document OWI for an expanded list. So, Global War, the Coronation of Napoleon I, the Davite Conquest of East Asia, the American Civil War, I should probably actually read these. The fifth, the referent to the term Fifth Occult War, a global war occurring throughout the 19th century Anno Domini coalesced from three separate conflicts in Europe, Napoleonic War, East Asia, Davite Conquest, and North America, the American Civil War. It is also notable for the overt use of anomalous objects, leading to a IK-class global civilization collapse scenario. 
Analog and Current Reality, a conflict in northern China concurrent with the Boxer Rebellion, whereby members of the Brotherhood of Harmonious Fists allegedly utilize unnamed anomalous objects. Although usage of the objects was minuscule, the O5 Council lobbied for the term Fifth Occult War to be the official referent among the organizations with awareness of anomalous phenomena, and it was officially acknowledged by the Global Occult Coalition during the Foundation GOC Summit of 1953. The Coronation of Napoleon I After his coronation, Emperor Napoleon declared Neo-Gnosticism to be the state religion of France and Europa to be its patron deity. Napoleon was crowned Emperor of the French in a ceremony presided by Pope Pius VII. No indication of Neo-Gnosticism or Europa worship is identified throughout Napoleon's regime. SCP-2515 is the only evidence suggestive of either. The Davite Conquest of East Asia Most of East Asia was invaded by a civilization of humanoids called the Davites. Conquest began from the three northeastern provinces of the Xing Dynasty. No record recorded anomal analogous events. Records from SCP-140 maintain that the Davite civilization was destroyed by the Mongols in the 13th century Anno Domini. That being said, Davite artifacts have been found in the northern areas of the three northeastern provinces. American Civil War A civil war between the United States of America and the Confederate States of America. Both factions, among others, were supplied weaponry from a group named the Factory. The war gradually spread to Mexico and Central America following the relocation of the Confederate government. No factory involvement identified. The American Civil War did not escalate beyond the continental United States. And we know what the factory is. The Th Thuggy Pacification Campaign, an initiative led by the Zeroth Anti-Cult Regiment to suppress the Thuggy, an organized gang known for harassing the Vitula, who were deemed to be co-belligerents with the British East India Company against Davite incursion into India. Suppression mandated by the Thuggy and Dacoity Suppression Acts 1836-48 Anno Domini, Neo-Sarkic involvement confirmed. The Vatican Holy Office for Secrets and Prophecies, or an organization with awareness of anomalous phenomena affiliated with the Holy See. During Napoleon's invasion of the Italian peninsula, members took refuge in South America, the African Free State, and the Middle East. The Artifacts Section, a department of the Vatican Holy Office, defected to the Italian Unification Movement and formed the Foundation Precursor Royal Office for Christian Artifacts. The Vatican Holy Office eventually merged with the Foundation in 1964 and O'Domini. Establishment of the Mexican Empire. Self-proclaimed as uh, Kem Anahuac, I don't know how to say that, a successor state to the Aztec Empire. Subjects of them and media produced by them possess memetic capabilities. Is that a SCP? It's SCP-2155, which were used to subjugate neighboring states such as Texas, Guatemala, El Salvador, and the Honduras. The Second Mexican Empire was established by a French intervention and ruled by Emperor Maximilian I. He allegedly brokered a marriage alliance with an instance of 2155-1 prior to his execution. The East Tennessee Convention Pro-Union elements based in East Tennessee seceded from the state of Tennessee following the latter's involvement in the American Civil War. The resultant state of Franklin was admitted into the United States of America and is the only state in the Union to separate from a Confederate state. The East Tennessee Convention ended with the occupation of East Tennessee by the Confederate Army. Instead, West Virginia seceded from Virginia and remained a state following the American Civil War. The Taiping Rebellion A rebellion in Davi occupied southern China, orchestrated by a slave named Hong Renkun, who claimed to have received a divine revelation from a deity called Mother Dragon, which is probably an SCP. That's Document 2481. It was suppressed by the Davites following the destruction of the Taiping capital, uh, Tai Sui King, formerly called Nan Nanqing, but would it be Tai Sui Xing, uh, prior to Taiping liberation and the massacre of the city's residents. A Type S event was announced by SCP-89, which was resolved by an expeditionary force co-organized by Her Majesty's Foundation for the Secure Containment of the Paranormal and Estate Noir. Hong instead subscribed to a personal interpretation of Christianity and renamed itself Hong Shi, uh, Shi Huan. No Sarkic involvement identified. Nonetheless, captured Taiping subjects exhibit signs of mental ma maladies, which seems to be something. SCP-2456. Nanqing was temporarily renamed uh, Qianqing while controlled by the Taiping rebels. And the Tumed Massacre. I don't think I pronounced that right. 
Systemic slaughter of about 150,000 ethnic Mongols in Davite occupied Mongolia by a Davite thrall. Reports indicate that said thrall possessed two bladed weapons and possesses unspecified regenerative abilities. The corpses of rebels were taken by Davite forces for unknown purposes, and that thrall was SP-76. The Jindan Dao's incident similarly involved a massacre of about 150,000 ethnic Mongols, although it was caused by the Chinese secret society Jindan Dao. Existence of Jindan Dao in previous reality cannot be ascertained due to limited sources. Anyway, the cause and origin of SCP-001 are unknown and cannot be ascertained. It is unknown if it or its equivalent has occurred prior to its known occurrence or may ever occur in the future. Additionally, it is unknown if it represents a typical or atypical occurrence of a CK-class restructuring scenario. In the event that it or its equivalent has occurred or will occur, it is speculated that a majority, if not all, of mankind and or sapient entities will have no recollection of them or the events prior to the moment of occurrence. It cannot be ascertained if partial immunity is applicable to future occurrences of one or its equivalent. The definition of SCP-001 was finalized by the O5 Council in a 5-4-4 vote, and the Forbidden City Convention was ratified on the 7th of September in the year 1901 Anno Domini. Addendum. Excerpts from the Forbidden City Convention. It looks like one of these is... It's a group of interest. Say Wikipedia? Wiki dot. Chapter 1. The Foundation. The following organizations are to be dissolved and disavowed from their respective patrons, and their personnel and resources are to undergo merger. Her Majesty's Foundation for the Secure Containment of the Paranormal Estate Noir. Tsar's Sears. Kaiserliches Duches Profond Pro Pro Paranormal That KDPPA. American Secure Containment Initiative. Imperial Commission on Transgressive Occurrences. Royal Office for Christian Artifacts. Special Investigations Board Council of the Dutch East Indies. Inner Africa Expeditionary Society. The Knights of the Military Order of Borgia e Aragon, Bureau of Onmu, Abnormality Institute, and Zeroth Anti-Cult Regiment. That still being a thing implies that it did not. In their place, a unitary organization is to be established. <clears throat> the mission of this unitary organization is to secure and contain various anomalous objects in order to protect mankind from said objects. The referent for this unitary organization is agreed to be the Foundation, the following alternative reference, institute, organization, organization, and the front have been proposed and rejected. The aforementioned 13 organizations from which the foundation is formed are henceforth designated as foundation precursors. Chapter 2, the O5 Council, which has its own link because command dossier. The provisional executive administration of the foundation is to consist of an executive council composed of 13 individuals, one from each foundation precursor. The aforementioned 13 individuals of this executive council were selected due to the following criteria. Leadership position and respective foundation precursor, or pos and possession of memory regarding occult war, I. Which I guess is like imaginary. The imaginary number, I. <laughs> Future members of this executive council are not required to possess both, the above, both of the above mentioned qualities. The referent for this executive council is agreed to be the O5 Council. The following alternative reference, i.e. Overseer's Committee, Level 5 Council, and O5 Command, have been proposed and rejected. The function of the O5 Council is to facilitate the initial transition from Foundation Precursors. Each O5 Council member is designated with a Roman numeral ranging from 1 to 13. Other organizations merged into the Foundation henceforth are to be denied representation on the O5 Council. Chapter 3, Groups of Interest. Organizations with awareness of anomalous phenomena that are not subsumed under foundation control are hereby designated as Groups of Interest. <clears throat> the Foundation's default approach towards Groups of Interest is to pursue their dis dissolution, termination, and or assimilation of their personnel and resources. Addendum 05-1-13 Succession Note regarding SCP-001. File displayed is dependent on logged in O5 account. Verifying login credentials. Administrator override. Code Howling Black Moon identified. All files displayed. Welcome, O51, to my successor. As the main editor, I don't know who these people are yet, so this could be the wrong, like, gender voices I'm giving, but mm, I don't know. 
As the main editor of SCP-001, I have already written all that you need to know. After 001, only the 13 of us knew of it, and we each stood at the height of our respective precursor organizations. Certainly, we were fated to take command and unite as the Foundation. As you can tell from the votes, there were two other alternatives for SCP-001 from our debate at Peking. They were ultimately voted down, but 2 and 12 left their marks on the Foundation history. The pity that 12's limited command of the English language mustered a relatively vernacular term, as opposed to 2's and mine. Nevertheless, our initiative to speak up for the first O5 meeting will be remembered and honored in almost every SCP article ever penned down. As for the Foundation's mission, well, I hope you and your colleagues continue our work. Welcome, O52, to my successor. Santayana once said, Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Now, the world as a whole cannot remember the past, but does it repeat itself? Yes, it does. During the Second World War, was there not another author authoritarian dictator terrorizing Europe? And were the Chinese not massacred again? Of course, the details differ, and America kept itself together throughout that war. <clears throat> Maybe that civil war occurred again in your lifetime, or will occur soon. Or that scaled-down skirmish was it. That still leaves the factory, but it is elusive. The product of an anomaly should be an anomaly in itself. SCP-001 and this world are no exceptions. Piece by piece, this world is undoing and repeating itself. For every SCP not, if not minimally, in our control, the process is ongoing. Until then, there will be chaos in the system. Once, I proposed that we guide the world back to its original state, but the others disagreed, in favor of establishing tyranny. Ultimately, I acceded. There's no need to fight for my views, nothing will change the process. No action is needed except to wait, or, in short, heater. Welcome, O53. To my successor, Anomaly and Normalcy, both are subject to the consensus. Today's anomaly might have been yesterday's normality, and vice versa. The Scandal 9 uncovered is one such example. Dryptomania is no longer anomalous when the consensus decides it no longer holds water, which is 1851EX. Apply the consensus onto one. To the rest of the world, the occult wars do not exist. They exist only to those who know the anomalous. To those who know the anomalous, occult war I does not exist. Only 13 men imagined it to have existed. And that could have been SCP-001. However, the Council established our own consensus, and my opinion shifted to that when it was announced. More of us decided that we should establish order over all anomalous matters instead of suggesting that we might be the problem. It would only be the first of many consensuses reached, where we held influence over the world's conceptions of what is normal and what's not. Perhaps they resulted in the world you have grown up in. Thus, remember these. Consensus has value, and to be normal is to abide by the consensus. <clears throat> Welcome, 054, to my successor. I'm one of the few who have fought on the front lines for both Fifth Occult Wars. I was gravely disappointed by the official Fifth Occult War, which is more accurately a skirmish. Those boxers simply can't compare to the Davites and Clockwork worshippers. Even after turning almost every other agency and cult into our enemies, the Wainscott Society cannot compare to total war. Perhaps it's the youthful bloodlust in me talking. It's a frequent quirk since a one happened, like during Peking when I voted for Two's proposal out of impulse. I didn't care for his strange theory. I only wanted to fight on. So many sacrifices have been made already, and I have made significant sacrifices as well. They cannot end in quiet days, but now I'm old, and quietness will come for me, but you... You were here to fight on. Make sure that it does not end in quietness. I probably, I probably can't come up with 13 different voices. Welcome, 055, to my successor. You know that the world was once averted from total destruction due to an uncontrolled event, and because it is uncontrolled, we cannot guarantee if it can work again, or if it will be in our favor. We should not rely on uncertainties like one. As a species, we have mastered and stomped on all the beasts and lands of the world, respectively. Many crafts are now mastered by man, crafts that were once dreams. 
The restoration of the world is simply another thing to be mastered. If the world can rewind itself, then we can do it too. By combining our resources, the magnum opus I envision can be reality. It might have been utilized already, or construction is so ongoing, but one will be irrelevant when it's ready. By our will, mankind rules eternal. And that's SCP-2000. Welcome, 056, to my successor. We agreed that one happened, but we don't know if it's the only time one ever happened. Could it happen again? 3557. Must the world be near its annihilation for it to work? How much is enough? What about trans-reality of memory ret retention? A more accurate term than that ill-defined compromise. How does it work? Why only us? Could it be replicated? The list goes on. This unusual phenomenon's level of uncertainty surely necessitates quantification. Euclid is a reminder of that conviction. That more should have should be known about one. Suppose you would have that drive. Cultivated by the Foundation's advocacy for scientific methodology. Containing and protecting cannot be the ends. Knowledge. Knowledge is. But the majority of the First Council was too afraid to probe and wanted to either abandon it or be preventative. Preventive. Neither solves a problem, really. But you can do your part in solving it. Only you can prevent forest fires, can see this and have access to however little I can find out, so let that be your starting point. May you deliver results and bring meaningful data to SCP-1. Welcome, 057, to my successor. Officially, only 13 people were immune to SCP-001, but there's another. Jabril Amani. He was a consultant working for the Sublime Port, and when we met... And we, we met when I took refuge in Constantinople due to Napoleon. He was most hospitable, and we became fast friends, and despite the traditional enmity between Christendom and Dar al-Islam. We stayed with each other until the occurrence of SCP-001, where I found myself in Rome. In the Kurt world, he managed to contact me, and I knew he remembered our friendship in the lost past. Meeting him, we spoke extensively about our memories of occult war I. I invited him to join me in an upcoming gathering in Peking with other men who remember the war, but he politely declined. Jibril would rather defend his friends and clansmen, especially when we knew that the Middle East was in chaos then. He was skeptical towards one and his affiliation, but we could not blame his suspicion and respected his wishes. We parted ways since then. With all I took on the title of 057, Jibril told me that he would return to Iran to gather allies for his cause. Different hub. Just as he desired to protect his loved ones, my obligation is to the world, and I will defend it. P.S. Out of respect, I decided not to report to the Council about Jibril. I do hope that whatever organizations Jibril and the Council built in the end will not clash. We only wish to protect. Welcome, 058. My successor? As you can infer from the votes, there were three choices that ultimately led to SCP-001. One's proposal was really the only option. Those were stupid. Two essentially demanded us to be anarchists, while twelve assumed they were a bunch of lunatics who need an oriental drug. No, thank you to either. Most of us have been collecting anomalous objects to begin with, so the Foundation is not much different from at least half of its precursors. As for the other half, well, the groups of interest we we'll have everyone on the same page. You should have you, you should have been doing this job for quite some time, so I expect you to keep it up. Welcome, 059. My successor. <clears throat> SCP-001 is the restructuring of reality. It's our consensus. Therefore, it is reality bending. Two claim that reality will inevitably revert to correct the world, which is similar to Scranton's famous address. On the topic. That being said, the latter insisted that reversion would be caused by the reality bender. It might be hard to control sapient beings, although some scholars believe that an engine would theoretically increase the probability. Which is grant request for the manufactured devices to regulate probability. This prospect brings hope that the greatest known act of reality bending can be reverted. And when it happens, the world might revert to its previous state. 
complete with my home in the African Free State where the IK class narrow did not really apply. Might as well be the previous world's only safe haven. That stability was lost after one and I ended up working in a less hospitable setting. Even though I was not favorable to one's concept, the Foundation is by far a better environment. It's also a good place to figure out how to realize Scranton's ideas, or at least invest in someone who can. Despite the money and subjects I have supplied, progress has been slow, and I've come to terms that I might never regain my losses. But you can, should one ever happen again. You should continue to research in whatever way you can, because you shouldn't be like me and lose that which is yours. No one deserves that. Welcome, 0510, to my successor. There were 13 groups that started the Foundation, but not all of us stand equal. Take 12's Abnormality Institute, unendorsed by the Shing, but mine is similarly in decline. Our namesake was a witch hunter, but none of us actually met a real witch. An interest group was a more accurate description for the Borgia Knights of the late 19th century. Not for the memories I had of the occult war I would have remained that way. When one spoke of his great scheme, I had my doubts about fighting the anomalous. Each new generation of knights is a shadow of the previous, and it shows. In a cult war, I, I remembered my knights being annihilated by Napoleon's clockwork soldiers. They were, and are, not ready for an occult war, or any fight against demons or sorcerers. To submit one's pro to one's proposal, would have meant gruesome deaths for them again. As their Grandmaster, I would not send them to their deaths. When the vote was not in my favor, I briefly considered to not oblige to the terms of the merger. That thought perished when I heard Eight's proposal to foster the unity of our newly dubbed Foundation, and after that, I decided that my knight should at least die meaningfully against monsters rather than as a sacrifice. All of us die eventually. Make it meaningful for those you hold responsibility over. P.S. All things considered, the resources from the other precursors did ensure that the last generation of knights will be better than the previous batch. Welcome. Welcome, 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 0511, to my successor. Congratulations for your service to the Foundation. I imagine that you have to climb the hierarchy to reach this position, unlike I, who was granted the position by virtue of being first. Your virtue must be astounding. Unlike mine, during the Cold War, I, Kyoto fell to the Davites. Okay, so this, I guess, a Japanese person. Mm. Emperor Komei and most of the council were killed. The Shogun and his agents only fled to Izo. I was among the few to have left Kyoto alive, but only because I feared for my life. I ultimately regretted my choices and shame overtook me. Not even death liberated me. At least Emperor Komei passed away in a less violent manner in this new world. This brought me to my vote at P uh, Peking, that we were hallucinating and the amnestics will cure us. Actually, I only want to forget, but the consensus was reached and I'm not allowed to forget. One insisted that we were fated to work together and no one else shall stand alongside us in this council. At least it was tolerable knowing that there were others like me. 3, 7, and 13 were very positive influences. My successor... I know not your colleagues in the O5 Council of your time, but they shall be your sworn allies. Remember that. Twelve. What is that? That must be three thousand. To my successor, I'm sure you've heard of the Nestics, and I'm sure that it has been improved over the years, but the origins of Amnestics as a whole is one of the many secrets of the Foundation. I will explain it. Amnestics was originally a secret of the Meng clan of the alchemists. I married one of the clan's women to claim the right to make it. Originally, I wanted to cure myself of a series of disturbing visions which we now recognize as memories of a Cold War I. Before I could prepare the concoction for myself, Eleven contacted me and told me of similar visions. Soon I gained knowledge that there were are more men who experienced the same vision and they intend to meet at the capital. As a physician, it is my duty to see to everyone's recovery, and I attempted to convince them that it would be safe if we take no unnecessary action. Most of them disagree with my views, so they insisted on a democratic vote as per the ways of the West. Needless to say, my views were 
rejected, but not gymnastics. Bob concluded that it is useful for it can revert memory, vaguely similar to SCP-001. Thus, amnestics stopped being a cure for the illness I had proposed, but to cure the common folk of any knowledge of the abnormal. Unfortunately, Matriarch Meng did not approve of the foreigner's theft of her clan's secrets, and the Meng clan was one of the earliest groups of interest we faced. Their fate was as the boxers were, although a junior or two might have escaped to Hong Kong with what little they knew of the formula. And that's SCP-484. Please be of use to the council, but if you've earned this position, you should be of use. Welcome, 0513, to my successor. SCP-001 said that only the 13 leaders of the precursors were immune from its effects, but that was incorrect. There were only 12. One and I have known each other for decades, and I owed him a lot. Naturally, when he asked for a tiebreaker vote, I obliged. He filled me in on the Davite incursion in India to complete the deceit. When there were things I did not know of, I'd blame it on the British's unwillingness to be open with my regiment. I suppose you might be ashamed of the title by now, but if not for me, I dare say we might have three different foundations at war with one another. For me, it was an opportunity to be treated more seriously by the Europeans, and I took advantage of it. Since then, I've made many amends so that others will not end up in my situation. Thus, promise me that you will vote according to your will, not by another's. Scan complete. 40 instances of SCP-001 identified. Initiating random number generation. So, since everything is now grouped into Roman numerals, and may have been the whole time for all I know, I didn't notice because it's really faded. So it sounds like the consensus was the result of everything that happened in past and future. But that also implies that um, the reason it got to that point was because of the events of Ouroboros, or Ouroboros, however you want to say it. So it's interesting to think about, but in the next episode of Reading 001, we're going to start with When Day Breaks and make our way through this category of three, and I guess I'll start titling them based off of that so for now if you liked it a like and a subscribe would be groovy if you didn't you don't need to do either one of those things if you want to click the bell you can do that as well so that you're notified of future uploads and i will see y'all in the next video later